Hi everybody, how's it going? So this is the rule stool. So when you see the rule stool come out on this channel, more than likely you're gonna hear something that has to do with the rules of flying a drone. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the Lance system, the authorization process that the FAA uses, used to be just for part 107 commercial drone pilots, but now also for recreational pilots, for hobbyists, for anyone that wants to fly in restricted airspace, Lance is now available. And so we're gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna to show you how to do it. We're gonna talk about Kitty Hawk and Air Map, and I'm just gonna show you the difference between the two and then at the very end I'm going to tell you which one I recommend using so let's get right to it the rule stool it's got a nice ring doesn't it both me and my son thought maybe it was a good idea and we'll have some fun with it so anyway so you just got a new drone maybe or maybe you've had one for quite a while and you're scared to fly it because there's absolutely an overwhelming amount of stuff to learn and use and experience as you explore this amazing new toy. It's a toy, basically, it's an adult toy, but it's still a toy, but you've just been putting it off because there's so much to learn and you're kind of scared and you're not sure where to fly and everything like that. Well, first of all, this channel is for you. You are in the right place because 51 Drones is dedicated to those of you who are just getting started in this hobby. I do tutorials and reviews and comparisons. That's what you're gonna find on this channel. But one of the most valuable resources that you're gonna find here is all of the information that you need when it comes to the rules of flying a drone in the United States, at least. Once in a while, I check out what's going on in other countries as well. But for the most part, I just talk about the rules in the United States because right now we're going through a lot of transitions and there's a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of ambiguity. That's a hard word to say, ambiguity, but there's a lot of uncertainty out there. So I wanna to try to inform as many of you as possible. And it is one of the most confusing things about owning a drone because you're not sure if you can fly here or you're not sure you can fly there or whatever. Now, the thing is you just can't fly wherever you feel like it. There are limits, just like you can't drive a car on the sidewalk or you actually can't use a catapult in Aspen, Colorado. You can own a catapult, but you better not be using it or you're gonna get a big fine. And yes, that's an actual rule on the books in Aspen, Colorado. Now before, it was difficult for the average person to understand where those places were that they could fly. For part 107 certified pilots, it's always been easier to know where you can fly because they've had access to the Lance system and they know how to read a sectional chart. Well, you should know how to read a sectional chart if you have a part 107. Well, now this instant flight authorization system is available to everyone, you can get instant authorization to fly in certain airspace at certain altitudes today as a hobbyist drone pilot. Now, right now there are two leaders when it comes to service providers for communicating your desire to fly to the FAA. They are AirMap and Kitty Hawk. Now both do the same job, but they have a little bit of a different look to them. And there's a couple of differences that I'm gonna tell you about. Now, which one you use is totally up to you. And I'm gonna tell you which one I recommend at the end. But today what I wanna show you is how to gain authorization to fly as a recreational pilot. And then I'm gonna show you the differences between these two apps. Now, at the making of this video, there are nearly 600 airports participating in the Lance system. And yes, it's Lance, it's not Lank. Don't be a sociopath. <laughs> but anyway, more airports will be added as the months go on. Now, I live in a town of 45,000 people and my airport is in the system, so even smaller communities have access to this. So first, let's take a look at AirMap. All you have to do is simply download the app, open it, and create an account. It only takes a few minutes. It's very basic. Once you're logged in, the first thing that you're gonna see are some circular shaded areas, along with a blue dot. That's you, that's your current location. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your fingers to locate the area that you would like to fly. So let's say I'm gonna fly right here on the edge of this controlled airspace. Now what you wanna do is continue zooming in until you see the maximum ceiling numbers appear. So if I wanted to fly in this quadrant right here, I can see that I really won't be able to because the max ceiling is zero and it has a red line. But what I could do is go over here to the next quadrant and I see that I can fly up to 100 feet above ground level. So what I'll do is tap and hold my finger until the circle appears right there. Now you can adjust the radius of the circle by using the slider right here. And if your radius extends into restricted airspace, then that circle is gonna turn red and you can't fly in that airspace. But if it's orange, 
you are okay to request authorization. You can also draw a flight path or make your own boundaries by using the icon on the bottom right here. You can adjust the area by dragging the black or white dots. Now keep in mind, if your plan overlaps into a lower zone, you will only be able to request the lowest altitude. Once you have a flight plan at the very bottom where it asks, what is your mission? You would choose FAA Recreational Flyers 44809. Then at the top, click on Next. Now this is where you're gonna enter as much information as you can about your planned flight. When you wanna fly, how long you're gonna be airborne, the maximum altitude you will go to, your name and the name of your drone if you have one. It's gonna ask you if you wanna have insurance, then your name and your phone number again and the weight of the drone, and also if you're gonna be flying over people. If you click yes here, it's gonna absolutely give you a no. And then also it's gonna ask you if you're gonna keep visual line of sight, and if you click no on that, you're gonna get a no. So once all of that is filled out, you're gonna click on next and you will get a notice as well as a text message telling you if you are approved or not. Next, let's take a look at Kitty Hawk. Now, the cool thing about Kitty Hawk is that it's not only a service provider for authorization, but it's also a pretty powerful mission planner. But I'm not gonna show you that today. To apply for flight authorization with Kitty Hawk, you just click on the airspace maps icon and this will bring up your maps. You're gonna to navigate to your location that you wanna fly and you're gonna click on that area. At the bottom, you're gonna click on the blue identifier and it will tell you the max altitude that you can fly within that rectangle. If that works for you, go ahead and click on Get Authorization. You're gonna choose Recreational. You're gonna enter your phone number and then you're gonna to have to verify your number the first time. And then you will get a text. You're gonna enter that number and then you are verified. Next, you're gonna navigate back and then it will ask you to draw out your flight plan. You're gonna choose your maximum height and then step two is to enter your time of flight, how long you're gonna fly and then click on Next. That's gonna take you to the screen that tells you if you are eligible to receive auto approval. Then you're gonna click on next again and you're ready to go. So as you can see, both apps are a little bit different. I do like that the Kitty Hawk app has current weather conditions and it even has the KP index for, you know, if there's like a bunch of solar flares affecting connection issues. Okay, I just wanna be clear that AirMap also shows you weather conditions, but it doesn't show you them up front like Kitty Hawk does. It shows you the weather conditions right before you click on the submit button. So I just wanted to be sure that you guys understood. They both show you the weather conditions just at different times. Now what I like about the air map is that you can instantly see on the screen at which height you can fly. You don't have to click anywhere. It's just right there right away. It's very efficient. The other thing I like about AirMap is that it shows you other places that are restricted, like national wildlife refuges, waterfowl protection areas, and other things like that. Now, I like that because those are prime places to fly. And on Kitty Hawk, at least right now, as a beginner, I wouldn't know that I couldn't fly in those areas. So like I said, both do the same job, just a little bit differently. Also, there are other service providers out there, but I haven't checked any of them out because I don't know how they could be better than these two, so I just stick with what works. Now what I do recommend is that you try them both and see which one tickles your fancy. A couple of reminders, if it does say zero, you just can't fly there, don't even try. Or if you see this color right here, kind of a purplish blue on air map, or a red on Kitty Hawk, stay away. That's a TFR or temporary flight restriction, and it is way off limits. If you're flying a DJI drone in those areas, that drone is gonna auto land and there's no way you can stop it. So stay away from TFR zones. It's not worth losing your drone or getting a huge fine. So now, which one do I use? Well, I'll tell you that up until just four days ago, I used AirMap exclusively just because that's what I was used to using. But now it seems that DJI and the FAA have decided that Kitty Hawk has it going on. So you know that before you fly app that pretty much no one used because it really sucked? Well, Kitty Hawk took the reins and they redesigned the entire app and it's actually good now. So if you've avoided it for a while because it was terrible, check it out again because it's much improved. It's amazing what can be done when you take government away and let the private sector run things. So congratulations, Kitty Hawk, I commend you. You're kicking butt and moving this industry forward. So we are finally seeing some progress in the recreational sector. I'm happy to see that the airspace is opening up. Yes, you have to jump through some hoops before you fly in restricted airspace now, but at least we can finally fly in those areas. If you have any questions about authorization or anything related to drones, especially as a beginner, 
just go ahead and ask me in the comments. I do my very best to answer as many respectful questions as I can. Hit that like button on the way out if I gave you any information of value today. Go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. Have a wonderful day, and as always, fly safe and fly smart.